consecration, O God. Oh, Heavenly Father, God, as we come before you, God, today, my God, as his word, my God, is unto your glory today, God. My God, as I am just your vessel today, Lord, that, my God, I come, Lord, and I ask you, Holy Ghost, that you take this word and you take this line and you make your glory known through this word, God, today, Father. My God, I come before you, my God, with a contrary broken heart today, God. Knowing, my God, that I need you, Holy Spirit, that nothing good could come out of this line, God, unless it was your word today, Father. I need you, God, your anointing, my God, to flow on this line today, Father, that it's not just another routine word, God, today, Father, but your presence be made known in this place, God. We honor you today, God. We honor you and we praise you today. We lift up the name of Jesus today, the name above all names, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And God, you deserve our honor and you deserve our praise today father as i think about that song my god and it says that the praises of the angels shook the temple today father so we lift the name of jesus up god and i ask my god every single person my god whoever it may be you draw them unto yourself god because no good thing could come out of me god but your anointing my god demolishes yokes today your presence my god your holy holy presence today my god there's liberation god and there's freedom and there's truth today father so i ask you sanctify me god i ask holy spirit that your fire and your anointing flow through my mouth today god and i ask lord anything lord you want said you speak through me god anything you don't want said god don't bring it back to my remembrance today touch this line and find every distraction Every form of the enemy that would try to pluck this seed in the name of Jesus. And I apply the blood of Christ over this line today. That no weapon formed against it shall prosper. I love you, God, and I praise you. And I welcome you, Holy Spirit, to have your way unto your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. I'm going to get started. Since there's a few people on here, I want to thank Alicia for uh, asking me to do this word and um i'm guessing you can hear me the last few years all of us all our friends we talk like our groups we talk about the word the last few years god has been ministering to us about the book of nehemiah and we've all been grasping different things and helping each other but i have to say this study has come alive this study on this group has come alive the Lord has revealed things that we did not see when we read the book of Nehemiah. And I want to say that it is the Holy Spirit, but the Word of God says those who will diligently seek Him will find Him. And I have to say, these women that's been doing these words, they have been seeking God's face for revelation, not just for their self, but to feed you. As I was reading this word, Alicia asked me a couple of months ago to do it, and you know, I never take doing a word of God lightly, but I have to say this chapter, it went, when I started studying, it went aligned with every single thing I have been studying the last month. I never even started studying this the last week, but the last month I've been every single YouTube video, every kind of scripture I've been on, the Holy Spirit's been speaking to me about the reverence and the awedness of the Lord and to have the fear of God. And as I opened this up last week, the Lord made it come alive and he spoke it to me in a way that we need to take for ourselves. As the word of God says that we are rightly dividing the word of truth. When we come on here, this is a holy thing we're doing unto the Lord. This word, it's not just a book. It is the holy word of the living God coming through and speaking to us. And as the book of Revelation says, it says that Jesus comes and he knocks on the door. And it says that anyone that will listen, anyone that hears him knocking and opens the door to him, he will come in and he will sup with them. But understand that it says that those who will hear him. Today, listen to what the Holy Ghost has to say. Take this word and apply it to yourself. I never want to get on here and I never want to point fingers because when we take these words and we divide it and we give it out to you, it has to go through our soul and through our spirit first. And as I read this, I'm telling you, I feel completely undone because I've seen so much of what's happening in this chapter going amongst our people today. 
So please take this and apply it to yourself. And just have an open ear to hear what the Holy Ghost has to say. My Bible, when I open up, it says in Nehemiah 13, that is a chapter we're going to be on. It's called the Principles of Separation. We are in a chapter, this is the last chapter in Nehemiah. But during this chapter, Nehemiah is not there. He went back to Persia and he is attending to the king. So all through this Nehemiah, we're going to see that when this all took place, Nehemiah left and he went back. But I'll tell you what happened. If you go back into the last studies, you'll see chapter 10. You'll see the people, the people, the congregation, the people of the church, which will be us, represents us. They made a covenant before the Lord. Now, we're here at the point, the walls is being rebuilt. Everything has been set back in order. Nehemiah leaves to go back, and what happens? The people start backsliding. The people start going backwards, and if you go, we're not going to go through it today, but if this is something that interests you, go to the book of Malachi, and they parallel. Nehemiah 13, and all through the books of Malachi, they parallel to the times that the people was in. And if you read it, it will grieve your heart because you'll see the people representing us, the church, the people of Israel. They did not think they was backslidden. They thought they was doing right to the Lord. And when Malachi come, he said to them, God sent Malachi and he said, you're not listening. And he told them all the corrections. And the people was actually saying, we need to come back to you. They didn't even understand that they was doing things that was what we call profane unto the Lord. It was usual, as we say, business as usual. They was doing the things in the temple. They thought that they were serving the Lord. But it says in Malachi 3, it says that they was offering profane sacrifices unto God. And God said to Malachi, they should shut the gates of the temple. They should shut the door because the things that they're offering me, they was offering, they was offering blind sacrifices, lame animals. They was offering things unto the Lord that wasn't their best. And they was backslidden and they were so deceived that they didn't even know they was backslidden. And as I got to this point, I'm reading Nehemiah 13. And I said, how did these people get to this point? Because we see two chapters back, even the beginning of um, Nehemiah 13. It said when they heard the book of Moses, the book of the word, it said that they separated all the Amorites and the Moabites out of the assembly of God. They took and they was walking in what God told them to walk. But when Nehemiah left, they backslid so bad that they was in a state with their self that they didn't even know they was lost. And as we know, Nehemiah represents Christ in the story. And what happened? He left. We have something these people didn't have. We have the Holy Spirit of God inside of us. And the Word of God says that the Lord never leaves us. And He never, ever forsakes us. But what we do, we take the holy things of God. We take the Holy Spirit that is inside of us. It says we are the temple of the Holy Ghost now. That He dwells inside of us. That He never leaves us. But it says in the book of Revelation that they get corrected because they get told, You have forsaken your first love. You have abandoned your first love. And this is what we can do. We can have the things of God and we can have the Holy Spirit. But what happens when we get busy and we start backsliding and we start putting things. This whole chapter is about compromise. It talks about Tobiah. Now, you know, Tobiah, he was an enemy to Nehemiah. He was an enemy to the rebuilding of the walls. But what happened? We have Sam Ballot, who was the main enemy. And as Alicia taught a few chapters back, Sam Ballot represents Satan. He represents the enemy of our souls because he was the one, he was the first one that come and he aggressively targeted Nehemiah. But what happens? Tobias comes behind Sam Ballot and he starts copying what Sam Ballot was saying. He was the one that said, oh, these feeble Jews, if they rebuild the wall, the fox could jump on it and break these walls down. He was more of a mocking spirit. He was something that was more behind the scenes. He wasn't as barefaced as Sam Ballot in your face like Satan. But what Tobias represents is compromise. What Tobias represents as an enemy of us is that he is now in the temple. Tobiah come to Nehemiah when they was building the walls and he tried to get Nehemiah to stop building. But what happened? Because he couldn't stop the word and the work being done because he was anointed to do this and Nehemiah never fell for it. What happened is now when Nehemiah left, now when there's compromise, guess what Tobiah got? 
he got inside the temple walls. He got a place inside the temple. And as the Lord showed me this, compromise starts inside the temple. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost now. And what happens when we have compromise and we welcome compromise into our life and we don't keep on guard, we have a Tobias in our hearts because the word of God says now we're under the spirit of grace. We're Christians. We don't bow down and worship actual false idols that's made out of man's hands. But the word of God says now in the New Testament that the church has idols in their heart. So we have our soul right here and we have our flesh, but also represents Tobias because why? Our unrenewed flesh, our unrenewed carnal mind, it says in the book of Romans, is hostile to the things of God. It says that it cannot bow and submit to the God, to God, because it's hostile, that enemy to God. So what happens when we have our temple, this holy thing, and we're having compromise in our life, and we're having letting our flesh lead us, we're going to walk and we're going to welcome the things that's happening into this chapter. So now that we went through that, keep that in mind as we go through the verses. So we started, and it's going to talk about different things. I'm just going to let the Lord lead me because there's too much here to go into all these verses because this, you could go precept upon precept, but I'm going to let God speak and not even bother trying to be smart today. So it says, I'm going to start, and it says in the first one, on that day they read the book of Moses and they separated here. This is it. They obeyed God. They was walking in obedience to the Lord. And it says, I'm going to start in verse 4, 13, 4. And it said, now before this, here we're going to talk about, this is Eliashib. And it says the priest. Here, this would, Eliashib would represent us in this story. If that is making you insulted, all I can tell you is ask God to search your heart. Because the word is for us first, like I said. Eliashib was the high priest at the time. And it said that he had authority over the, all the storerooms of the house of God. Do you see that? We are called the high priest of our own home. The word of God tells us to guard our own hearts. We are in charge of what we let inside our temple. We are in charge of what we're going to listen to in the compromise we're walking in. And even the word of God says that Satan can only entice us by the own lust of our flesh. When he sees something that's a temptation in our life, then he can entice us. But what happens is he was the high priest and he had authority over the storerooms in the house. So he was in charge over what was going to come into the temple and what was not going to come into the temple. Now, this man was anointed and he was appointed. He was separate unto God to do this work. And what happened is it says that he become allied with Tobias. Allied in the natural, they was all married into each other. But in the supernatural, he become allied. He become yoked with Tobias. And Tobias was an enemy of the Lord. He was an enemy of the things of God. And like I said, he got inside the temple. He worked his way inside the temple. We could call this the, the enemy within the walls. We could call this the enemy within the temple with compromise and all that because it, it's been welcomed in because we're the high priest, but we welcome this compromise into our life. And it says that Elishib, the high priest, prepared for him a large room. Now, I want you to understand this scripture where previously... They had stored the grain offerings, the frankincense, the articles of tithes of the grain, the new wine and the oil, which were commanded to be given unto the Levites and the singers and the gatekeepers, the offers in for the priest. So we get allied with compromise. We, when you welcome the Holy Spirit into your life, you're calling God your Lord. He becomes the Lord. He owns everything. Every single thing in your body, in your life, is meant to be given unto the Lord because we give our bodies, we present our life, every single thing we have, we are called to present them to the Lord as a living sacrifice. And you know, you hear different people say, I hear people say all the time, it don't take all that, you don't have to do all this. Can I tell you, when I was, I was studying under this word a minute ago, I couldn't even stop crying because I thought about how the word of God says that Jesus Christ, by his own blood become our reconciler to God. 
we want to complain if we have to go to church or we have to re read our Bibles or we have to do a word. And we want to complain about that. And we think that Jesus, the crucifixion, the beating of God, being spit on, taking the curse upon himself, that was our sin, that he was forsaken for us. And we're going to complain and make a scene over doing things and giving our life to God when he is the one who gave himself for us. In the book of Hebrews, it talks, he says, by his own blood, he become our reconciler. His own blood, he went behind the veil, tore the, veil, the walls down so we can be reconciled to God. And without that reconciliation and without that blood, we will be bound for hell. We will be on the road to hell. That's what God did for us. And we're going to take the holy things of God. And that's what the Lord ministered to me on this. He said, my people's taking the holy things of God and they're making them profane. Because this man was anointed to do this. And I said, God, how could they get to the point that they was taking the things that they was separated and anointed to do? And he said, because they become familiar with it. They didn't treat it as a holy thing anymore. And it's a word come alive to me. You know what the word of God says in the book of Isaiah? That we're called to tremble at the word of God. That we're supposed to reverence the name of Jesus. And see, there was no reverence in this temple because compromise was behind the walls. And it said that he took all the things that was belonged to God, us, everything we have belonged to God, and he put it out and he put this enemy in that place. And we're coming to the point now, Nehemiah heard about this and he's coming back. And it says that, verse 7, this is Nehemiah speaking. As I come to Jerusalem, I discovered that Elishib had done for Tobias in preparing a room for him in the courts of the house of God. And it said, it grieved me bitterly. Therefore, I threw all the household goods of Tobias out of the room. Do you see what he did? I love Nehemiah and I love this chapter because he took charge. How many times has God dealt with us? Time after time, over little things of compromise, and we'll even make jokes about it. Oh, God's been telling me to do this and do that, but we don't take action. Soon as Nehemiah come in and he seen this, he took Tobias and all his household goods. Tobias was a pagan. He come, so if he would have moved into the temple, he had maybe his little idols with him in the holy place, where the places where God's things were supposed to be. He put idols in there. And it said, Nehemiah seen it, and he took it and he throwed it out. He took all of his stuff and he throwed him out of the temple. And that's what we need to do. We don't need to compromise with little foxes that spoiled the mind. We need to take charge like Nehemiah did and stop putting it off and get rid of the enemy. And you know what? The word of God says we have to crucify our flesh you cannot cast out the things of the flesh you can cast out spirits but the things of the flesh we have to crucify it we have to kill it we have to feed our spirit to be able to overrule the tobias in our souls today do you know the word of god that it transforms our our souls it's Trent, when you read the word of God and you get in the presence of the Lord, do you know that the power of the resurrection power is transforming your soul? It's sanctifying your soul. We're going from glory to glory to glory, but we're going to take these little enemy things and we're going to let them dwell in our temple that's supposed to be a holy thing unto the Lord. And it said that I cleanse the room. Not only did he throw them out immediately, but he re-cleansed the room. Because why? It was set apart for the Lord. You are set apart for the Lord. I know we live in a time where everything is about self and everything is about our flesh and the cares of this world and the pleasures of this life. But our life is not our own. And we cannot continue on living the way we're living. We want to take all the benefits of the Lord we don't want to walk in his holiness. You know, this is not just for ministers. And it's not just for preachers today. Do you know the word of God says that we are a holy people set apart for God? You know what the Lord revealed to me? 
there's a word in the Old Testament, and it's a word for consecration, and it's called hagos. I'm probably saying it wrong, but it means to be consecrated. And what consecrated, which we're all consecrated unto the God. When we take the name of Jesus as our Savior, we are literally, the Holy Ghost is sent to us to dwell on us, to separate us from the things of the world, but more importantly, to dedicate us to the things of God. Before we do anything else, we are called to be consecrated, means to put a, be put away for someone's use. So when we want to live our life, and call ourselves Christians, and we want to do whatever our flesh wants us to do, and whatever the world is doing, we're spitting in the face of God because we're not our own anymore. We're consecrated unto Him now. We've already partook of Him. So we're consecrated unto Him, but if we're not consecrated and set apart to Him, and what does that mean? Spending time communing with the Lord, reading your Bible, worshiping the Lord, doing prayer, thinking about the things of God, taking, if you think about that, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, seated in the heavenly realm and he wants to talk to you and he wants to have communion with you but we're so busy with the things of the world that we don't even want to spend time with god we're so filled with compromise when we can walk into our church that we can act like it's not even a holy place anymore and we're gonna say we need help you have help inside of you and it's the holy ghost and what happened with these priests they was anointed to do this work they wanted the ritual of being a high priest and to be a, a, a Levite. Go in the book of Leviticus and it will tell you all the stuff they done. They was made for this. Like we're made for this. But it become a ritual to them. It becomes something that wasn't holy to them anymore. And I thought about how we can complain about doing something for God. And it's what we're made to do. We have the light of the world dwelling inside of us, and then we are made to speak the name of Jesus to people. Even if you don't minister, you represent Christ everywhere you go in this world. You are called to be the light of the world. How are we going to change something when we're living in compromise? How are we ever going to let the light of the word of God shine through us if we're going to be like Tobias and we're going to be living we're going to be like these high priests, Elishib, and we're not going to take the holy things of God and reverence them. They're just to become regular, everyday things to us that we don't even honor the name of God anymore. And you know, this, if you go back two chapters, it talks about all the people. They was praising the Lord and they did everything. We're going three chapters later and they're walking in such a spirit of compromise because it's the everyday lifestyle that keeps us going with the Lord. Revival is the best thing we could have because it causes repentance. But what happens after revival? We have day to day walking with God. Why? Because we're called to be steadfast unto the end. It can't become so un such a common thing that we don't hold it as holy anymore. He said, so I cleansed the rooms and I put everything back in the articles of God. So he fixed that. There's three different portions in this chapter. And it's going to talk about three different things. I'm going to skip over the one about the Sabbath. But I'm going to go to verse 11. And Nehemiah said, so I contended with the rulers. And I said, why is the house of God forsaken? We talked about that at the beginning forsaken our first love do you know forsaken is your choosing to abandon you're choosing to step away from the things of god you're choosing to put it says in the book of revelation that you left your first love when we say that means priority we take our first love which is the savior the lover of our soul the beginning of the end and we choose to forsake the things of God because we've replaced him with another love. We've replaced him with the love of the world. This whole chapter is about compromise. Do you know what the word of God says about compromise? It says that the ones who call me God, the ones that are my disciples, the ones that are my friends, they obey my word. We don't get to walk one foot with the world and one foot with God anymore because we've already took and we've partaken of the crucifixion of Christ. We've already took him into us. 
There is no turning back now. So if you want to walk one foot with God and one foot in the world, you know what the word of God says? If you are lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. The book of Malachi says that he would rather have them shut the temple than to offer profane compromise sacrifices unto the God. Do you know that it says that we are friends with the world and we love the things of the world? We make ourselves an enemy of God. Now, I want you to think about that. That means loving the things of the world, that that's become an idol. That's become your standard. The holy word of God is not your standard no more. But you're just partaking of the world today because that's what everyone else is doing. You're making yourself an enemy of God. The most high, all-powerful, all-knowing will set itself against you as an enemy. For what? For the things this world has to offer? For the society that we live in that's all about popularity? It's all about status? Do you know that's the pride of life and the lust of the flesh today? Do you know that we're called to be contrite and broken before the Lord? And when he says that a contrite, broken spirit, I don't despise it. Do you know the word contrite means to be lame? It means to be broken to the point that we cannot do nothing without God. But we want to have a pride of life and we want to have our own status. We want to be cool. We want to be popular. We want our names known. That's love of the world today. And you're setting yourself against someone that loves you dearly and chose you. You're chosen by God. We're not, no one is a mistake. We're chosen to represent Christ here on earth. We're chosen to walk in a holy calling. So we're going to take that and we're going to partake of the world. And we want the benefits of God. But we want to walk with the devil. It doesn't work like that. It's a choice we have to make every single day. Are we going to forsake the things of God? Are we going to make the things that is called to be holy common? Do you know when I was reading earlier... It was reading about the sons of Aaron, and we know the sons of Aaron, what they do. They offer profane fire on the altar of God, and what happens? The true fire of God consume them. Do you know the word for um, profane in just the regular Merriam's dictionary? Do you know what it means? If you look it up, it just means to treat holy things as common. Now, let that rest in your spirit. Treating a holy thing is a common thing that you have no reverence for it no more. And this is what these high priests was doing. This is what these Levites was doing. This is what this congregation was doing. This is what we have become. The church, we have the enemy within the church now. The enemy's not on the outside of the church. He's inside the walls of the church because he's inside of us letting his compromise flow in our life. Do you know it talks about in the book of 2 Corinthians, Paul says to the people that he was scared. He said, I am scared that just like the serpent deceived Eve to give Get you away from your simple devotion to Christ. He lured her away from her devotion. That's what this is saying. We're being lured away from the things of this world. Away from our devotion to God. Why? Because the enemy is after it. He don't need to just be in the world no more. Because if he can get in the church, like we can walk in compromise. There is, there is no, there is no help. You know, the word of God says, without holiness, no one can see God. And we're going to take and we're going to divide the word of truth. We're going to speak things and take this holy word of God. And we're going to profane it and make it something common. We can walk in the church. I can't, there's not even no words anymore for the things that we see. And I'm not judging. I have my own things God's been dealing with me on. But when I see things that's happening in the church, that we can walk in the church and we can play on our phones and we can dress naked and we can come in like church is a meeting place and it's not a place to honor the Lord. I'm waiting for Christ to split the sky. I'm waiting for him to come back. And we're going to think that we're going to make heaven our home. I'm sick of hearing about people say that's just preachers. You are called to be the high priest of yourself, of your own home. You are called to represent Christ everywhere you go. How you dress and how you act shows the world who you are. It's becoming unholy. It's becoming common. We're taking these things 
it shook me to the core when I think about, in the book of Exodus, it talks about Moses going up the mountain. And it said that the people wouldn't go because they were scared. Because it said that the presence of the Lord shook the mountain. And it said that there was thundering and there was lightning. And they felt they were scared. But it says Moses got up and he went in the reverence of the Lord. That's what we need to do. We don't need to stand back from our holy God. We need to get in his presence. We need to worship him. We got to honor God. As we honor God and we reverence the Lord, you'll be able to hear God speaking. You'll be able to feel his presence because what you give honor to is what you will receive from. It never blows me away when I go into a church service and there's people and they can't even lift their hands unto the Lord. And there's other people shaking and they can't stand in the presence of God. It's so strong. Because if you have a Tobiah, if you have compromise in your life, if you're like Elishib and you're not honoring the things of God, you're not going to feel the Holy Ghost moving in your life because you've muted his voice. Like we said at the beginning, he don't leave you and he don't forsake you. But when you feed yourself on compromise, you cannot hear the Holy Ghost leading you no more. You are grieving the spirit of God inside of you. As I said from the beginning, those who have an ear, let them hear. If you're letting all this compromise drive out the voice of God in your life, you're not going to be able to walk a holy life because you're feeding upon the wrong things. And you can't be separated. If you have an issue in your life and it's something that has become a habit, if you want it to break, do what this says. Be consecrated unto God. As you are consecrated with your communion, with your time with God, the Holy Ghost, will give you grace and give you strength to be separated from the things of God. You cannot do that on your own. You have to be connected to be separated. Because if not, we become ritual. We become like these priests. We go through the rituals, but we're offering things, profane things onto the Lord. And then we're going to sit and call it holy. It comes from within. It comes from connection to God. It comes from doing that. And then you can be separated unto the things of the word, the world. Thank you, God. I praise your holy name today, God. You deserve our honor and you deserve our praise, God. Now we're going to go to verse 22. And it said, I commanded the Levites that they should cleanse themselves and they should go and guard the gates and sanctify the Sabbath day. Do you know the one thing I liked about this? Even though Elishib was walking in compromise, you know his name means... God restores, because we're going to see all through this, these people was walking in sin, and the priest was walking in sin, but all through this, Nehemiah re-sanctifies them, he tells them, go back and sanctify yourself, go back and cleanse the temple, go back and get right with God, any time we walk in compromise, if we truly repent, and remember, repentance is not just a change of mind, it is a change of actions, like we talked about in the beginning, Nehemiah immediately throwed Tobiah out and he changed the order. If you truly repent, God will help you not do those things anymore and he can restore. We can, I'm telling you, I lived a life years ago that God, if God would never put his hand on my life, I don't know where what I would have been. But I had to make a choice to do it God's way. I had to make it, and when I did, he come in like a flood, and he burned things off of me that I never could let go of, but it was because I repented. I let the Spirit of God, I let the Word change my mind about the way I lived, and ever since then, I've never looked back because it's his grace and his power, but it takes someone that you will listen to God, you will repent, and not just desiring it, but you take action. I posted earlier, it's about the book of Timothy, and it talked about you know, we can speak words, but a godly life backs it up. It's vain for us to call ourselves Christians if we're not living a holy life. And yes, we're all being transformed and we're all in different layers of our consecration and all that. But you have to put it to work. You have to practice what you're preaching. And even if you don't minister, you're ministering to someone. You're ministering to your family. You're ministering to your kids. When you leave your house, you're ministering to the darkness as you go in contact with the people. You are the light. We cannot be walking in compromise. I'm going to go down to the last one. I'm going to skip over this. I don't even know how long I've been on here. 
but it says in verse 28, this is really crazy because not only was the high priest married into Tobias, it talks about how the high priest's grandson is now married to Sam Ballot's daughter. We have union with the world, with the holy things of God. We already talked about this a little bit, but this is what happened when Nehemiah left. All these ones become allied. Compromise come into the church, and they started marrying these pagan women. Even the high priest's grandkids is now married to the enemy, Sandalit's daughter. This is how far they come. And it said that, verse 23, In those days I also saw Jews who had married women of Ashid, Ammon, and Moab. And half of their children spoke the language of Ashtard, or however you say that, and could not speak the language of Judah, but according to the language of their other people. Do we understand this? Because this called compromise, when they, God commanded them not to marry into pagan people, because it was causing compromise, and he uses Solomon as an example, how Solomon was such a holy man, but because he married into women that worship idols, he started worshiping idols. And that's back to the same thing. We are the bride of Christ. We're not the bride of the world. We're the bride of Christ. We are a holy, dedicated, pure bride. And I don't want to get too far into it, but there's something called spiritual adultery. And you can cheat on your husband, your God with the world. And it causes compromise in your heart. And we have this right here. We have this kind of unholy marriage, I would call it. One foot with God and one foot with the world. And they're still doing the ritual. They're still living the life. They're still doing the church thing. And this is what we see today now in church. But it says because of that, it said that the children couldn't even speak the language of Judah. So what happens when Ezra and Nehemiah and Malachi would have come and he read the scrolls, the children could have never understood it because they didn't understand the language of God. This goes to show you our walk makes a difference to the future generations. It talks about all through the Old Testament, it talks about in the book of Joshua, it talks about in the book of Exodus, talking about how the generation was lost because they wasn't taught the things of God. So now we have these children that we would call half-breed. They're half with the world, and they're half with God. They can't understand the things of God because they don't understand the language. That is what our compromise does. That is when we walk in compromise. The generation after is maybe it's your kids, I don't know, maybe it's your grandkids, whatever. If you don't teach them and you walk an example... They're not going to understand the things of God because just like these high priests, these is the high priest's kids. We're not just talking about the congregation. We're talking about the high priest. We're talking about the priest married into these idol worshipers that the children couldn't understand the language of the Lord. Think about that. That is something that should put our reverence and our fear of God in our, our hearts for the future generation and for our own children. That's how easy it is when we want to it blows me away sometimes when I look on Facebook. That's why I try to stay off it. Not that it's all wrong. We know that because we have this on Facebook. We have words. But when I see the things that our churches, our people, has been doing, and then I, it just blows me away that we want to call ourselves Christians now. But at the end of the day, you can only be held accountable for what you know. And the sad part is this generation that we're living in lives and breathes and dies in church. There's not one of our kids that don't come to church on a weekly basis. We're not talking about living in the world now. We're talking about the world living into the church now. We see all these things that's happening. We see Israel at war. We've seen prophecies coming back. We're saying the Lord's coming back soon. But really, are we believing it? Are we preparing our children? Are we preparing ourselves? Are we teaching our children to honor and reverence the things of God? Are we teaching them it's okay to walk into the church with compromise? It's okay to be hand in hand with Tobias. It's okay. Put the things of God out and put Tobias in. Replacing the things of God with things of the world. There's no fear that if we don't 
step up and do the right thing, that our kids could be lost, generations could be lost. And, you know, it's, it's sad that we can point fingers. Don't bother looking at everyone else. Do what you can do. Be an example where you can be an example. You can pray if you can't do nothing. There's something we can all do. It's easy to point fingers and separate and be them versus us. But at the end of the day, we're one body, one spirit. That's what the word of God says. We can help. We can pray. We can rebuild. What did it say in the book of Nehemiah at the beginning? All the people come together and they had a mind to work. Forget about what everyone else is doing. Do what you can do. Start where you can start. Teach your own kids the things of the Lord. Don't be pointing and saying they're not doing this and not doing that. If it grieves you, have your own family be an example. It starts with us. It starts with us doing the work. And I love it because he says, it's, I always laugh when I read this. When he seen this, he said, so I contended with them and I cursed them and I struck some of them and I pulled their hair out and I made them swear by God saying, you shall not give your daughters to the wives and sons. Do not take daughters for yourself we laugh about this because he wigged all them he took all their hair out but what happened is what what happened in the new testament when jesus seen the temple being a thieves he he cast it out you know just because we're christians does not mean we're doormats we do serve the lion of judah we do serve someone that is just judge we can stand up for the things of god boldly this is just an example he was leader over them. We obviously can't go wig people, but we can stand up and we can boldly proclaim the things of God. We don't have to be, we don't have to be scared. We don't have to be intimidated that someone's going to get insulted because you know what the word of God says to preach the full counsel of the Lord, not just the little things that's going to make us feel good, but to speak truth. Because it's the truth that sets us free. And as I talked about in Hebrews, it talks about the sword of the spirit going and dividing soul and spirit. That's what it does. Sometimes it is going to pierce you. But the good thing about that is you can start fresh. You can start like his name means God restores. You can learn. We're all learning as we go. Every single one of us is learning as we go. None of us should be unteachable. None of us should be above correction. None of us should say, oh, I'm so holy and everyone else is not. No, we can all grow in the things of God. And the good thing is God restores. God rebuilds. He'll teach us how to do things. And the good thing is he is there with us to help us along. He don't leave us. You know what? I heard a word the other day and I'm getting ready to close. But I heard a word and the man said that something happened in his life. And he went to his pastor and he was struggling with something. And his pastor told him, the Lord can't help you. So what the man ended up doing, he ended up taking his own life. Because the man basically told him that Jesus couldn't help him. I'm here to tell you, Jesus not only died for us, but he sent the Holy Ghost to help us. It's the grace of God. You know, grace and power in the word is the same word. When we humble ourselves and we get right with the Lord, not only will he give us his power to live right, but he gives us our grace to do it. That is why it's important not to be like these priests and not to be like these different ones in this and just go through the rituals get along with the lord get along with god you know nehemiah he went back to persia he come back and forth he did not walk in compromise because he had a relationship with the lord and the relationship is what sustains you when we come on and we want to be religious and we want to point fingers we're partaking just like a pharisee when we can get with god and let god do a work in us he will give us the power and the strength and the anointing to help other people but it all comes from him. So I'm going to close. There was so much more, but I feel like the Lord wants me to shut this up. I hope that someone received. I, I know I've received when I read this. The word is so alive. You know, study your word because God will speak it to you in ways that you've never seen it. And it's so strengthening and it gives you, it gives you that you can be sustained in the things of God. It truly is powerful to be in the presence of the Lord and to honor him, to be able to even do a word, that God would even choose us to be a mouthpiece for him is mind-blowing. And we always want to reverence God and give honor to God because it's always about the Lord. It's always glory unto the Lord. It's glory unto God, the name of Jesus. That's what we're here is to glorify God. So God, I come to you today, God, and I honor your holy name, God. 
I ask, God, whoever watches this, Lord, even me, my God, anything that I've missed, God, today, Father, my own family today, God, I thank you, God, you are a restorer, and I thank you, you are a healer, and I thank you, Holy Ghost, that you speak truth to us, and you reveal things to us, God. I ask, Lord, as your word says, that we ask you, search us, O oh Lord, and show us any part of Tobiah that we're compromising and taking the things of God and putting them out and putting Tobiah in our temples today, Father. Anything that we're taking as a ritual today and we're just doing things and we're not honoring you, God. We're taking it and we're just doing it and making it unholy, God, today. That is what you'll spit out of your mouth. Forgive us, God. We call for repentance, God, today. We forgive. I ask you to forgive us for grieving you, Holy Spirit, for taking and forsaken you with the things of the world and cheating on you god forgive us god forgive us for not reverencing you forgive us my god for walking in compromise god show us the things god the idols in our heart god that we have put before you that we serve and we talk about and we spend time with above you today god reveal that to us god help us desire god i ask lord you give us clean hands and a pure heart today not to make us Something, God, that you have not made us do. You made us to be holy. You give us your Holy Spirit. You give us your Holy Word. You are a holy God today. So we honor you, God, with our lives today. And I ask you help us and you show us things. And I ask you bear fruits in us, Holy Ghost, to show people that it's you and us, God, today. I ask you bless this page and you bless every single person on this line. And you bring an anointing, God, that causes repentance and restoration like the walls got rebuilt. We glorify you, and we praise you, and we honor you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Love you all. Thank you again, Alicia.